All right, math one, uh, practice 4B.2.2, recognizing odd and even. So the first, it says change or remove terms to first rewrite each original function as an even function, then as an odd function. OK. So first, let's see what we've got, I guess. So remember, for an even function, we have to have like a positive 1 and a negative 1 as inputs would give us the same answer as an output, okay? So let's try 1 and negative 1 here. So we'd have 5 minus 2 plus 1, so that would be 3, 4. So 5 minus 2 times negative 1 plus negative 1 squared that would give us 1 plus 2 plus 5, okay? So that would give us 8. So that wouldn't work, would it? Okay. So how can we change this to work? Well, what if we, I guess the easy fix would make that to be like the fourth power? then that would be minus 2, and it would change that negative 1 to a minus 2. So that would get it to a even, right, would be to make that a fourth. Okay. So now what would we have to do to make it odd? So for our even function, the a of x equals 5 minus 2x to the fourth plus x squared. Now, there could be other ways to do this. This is just one of the ways. So now for our odd, remember when it's odd, you have to make these give opposite answers. Okay, so the same number, but the opposite side. Probably the easiest way to do that would be eliminate those and just have negative 2x. Because if we did negative 2x times 1, we'd get negative 2. If we did negative 2 times negative 1, we'd get positive 2. So our odd would be a of x equals negative 2x. Okay? Now, if we look at number 2 now, the thing about number 2 is we've got an absolute value there. Okay? So, if we eliminate that, we have negative 2 absolute value of 4x. Um, if we did a negative 1, or a positive one, we'd get negative 4. The absolute value of that is positive 4 times negative 2 is going to be the same as 4 times 1, which would be positive 4. Absolute value of that would still be time 4 times negative 2. So for our even, we would just go b of x equals negative 2 absolute value of negative 4x. Or, I guess we did positive 4x. Either one it would give us the same thing. Okay? So now about our odd. So our odd, we need to make them be the opposite. Okay? So, if we made it negative 2x times absolute value of 4x, that might work. So if we did a negative 1 here, that would be negative 2 times negative 1, absolute value of 4 times negative 1, which would be negative 1, absolute value, that would be a positive 2, so 2 times 4 would give us 8. And if we did a positive 1, negative 2 times positive 1, absolute value of 4 times positive 1, so we get absolute value of 4, which is just 4, that would be negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 would give us negative 8, and there would be our odd right there. So our odd and our even. So these ones are kind of tricky, aren't they? Ooh, logarithm. That's going to be a tough one. Okay. I may need to graph those ones too. 
That one is a super crazy looking graph. It looks basically like this, the logs. It goes down like this and then starts right there. Okay. However, if we remove the plus x, if we move, remove that plus x, it actually gives us, uh, and graphing this on Desmos is probably a great way to kind of play around. It gives us a graph that looks something like this, okay, which would be symmetrical over the y-axis, so that would be even. So for our even, to go x squared times log of x squared. That would be our even one. Now our odd is a bit trickier. Weirdly enough, I was just playing around, and um, if we go x cubed times log base 10 of the absolute value of x cubed, we get a graph that kind of goes like this and would be um, an odd. So those ones are tough. Okay. Now if we do cosine plus sine, cosine of x plus the sine of x, okay, we get our basic trig looking function. Okay, looks something like this. Alright, so to match it over the y-axis to make it even, we just need to shift it a little to the left. So, so if I do Just double check this. This one's really tough. So what I did was I made this plus pi over 2 and that actually turned it into an even function because it shifted it over so it matched the same way going back and forth so it fold over on itself. Okay. Now to get it to rotate around the x-axis that's going to be much tougher to do. Um, uh, I suppose that works. Um, what I did is I just put a minus sign right there, and that gave me the odd version because it was basically just a line right here, which if I rotate would give me the same thing. Um, don't know if that's what they wanted us to do, but it worked for me. Um, you would just have to play around for some other things to figure out how to get it um, so it would rotate that way. But we'll call that good. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Okay, so now it says use this graph, identify the function, and go from there. Okay. Um, let's not worry about determine the equation. Let's just worry about if they're odd, even, or neither. So f of x would be this guy. Okay, the thing to notice, okay, right there, it crosses through the origin. So if I rotated it, we could actually rotate it through the origin. So it would be a, you know, a sine function, essentially. Um, but it would be able to rotate, so it would also be odd. Okay, g of x is kind of this weird-looking one right here, which it looks like we could fold over that, so it would be even. h of x is this absolute value, which you want to say you can fold up, but we'd have to nudge it over, so that would be neither. So, and if we really wanted to know the equation, it would be like the absolute value of x plus 1, negative absolute value. For g of x, I don't know what that would be, a logarithm maybe? That one, we'd have to play around to figure that one out. And 5 would be some sort of sine function. Um, with a period slightly above 2, so we'd have to do a little bit more work than I really care about doing right now. Um, our main focus is just understanding if it's odd, even, or neither. Okay, the last one. So we've got these graphs. So in a microelectronic circuit, this current I and voltage V fluctuate with time T according to these functions. Okay, 
The third is the power produced by the circuit, P of T. It's the product, so it's those two multiplied together. Okay, so is I of T and V of T even odd or neither? So I of T looks like it's this guy. Okay, which would be a cosine, so that works. If we folded it over the y-axis, it would work. So that's even. Okay, V of T, I'm assuming is this guy right here, okay, which it goes to the origin. If we rotated it around, that would give us odd. So what about their product? When we times that odd and that even, what do we get for that guy? So if we look at this one, looks like it goes through the origin, and I want to say it also, we could also rotate that, so um, so P of, T, P of T looks like it would be odd as well. Now is it a cosine or a sine function? Well, it could be either. Right now it looks like it's a sine function, but if we did a cosine with a shift, it would also work for that one, okay? Which is kind of explaining it. So recall that the period is the distance between maximum and minimum points on the graph, right? One period. How does the period of PT compare to the period of the other two? So let's kind of take a look at that. So P of T will do this one in yellow. So it looks like it has a period right about three, a little past three, maybe 3.14, hmm? number we're pretty familiar with, pi. Okay, if we look at V of T, it has a period about 6.28, so probably a period of 2 pi. And I of T, that small one, looks like it has a period also of about 2 pi. Okay. So that's kind of interesting that that would do that. That it would be half as much, even though you're multiplying it, it would end up being half as much as the other ones. So, anyway, that's kind of the main gist of everything we needed to do there. We'll call that good.